My name is Kush Tracy and I have a message to all guardians and parents with students in primary school, high school campuses. As long as you have a student, this message is for you. So I am a transformational speaker and I deal with a lot of students and I speak to a lot of students. And within the last one and a half years, I've gotten a chance to speak to a lot of students um, across the country in different counties. I've learned a few things because students tend to trust me and they open up to me some of the issues, challenges, and the things they're dealing with personally and what is going on back at home around their school with their friends. So I get to hear a lot of things. So I did a list of a few things which I think it's important for parents to be aware and to know since it's a holiday season and I know students are at home and they'll be going back to school in January. This is just a few things that I've learned as a transformational speaker. I wanted to share this with all the guardians and parents. So let me just get into it. First thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, encouraging your children. I've met so many students and a lot of times they say they have very busy working parents and sometimes the parents don't take time to encourage them, especially when it comes to their education and when it comes to their day-to-day -day activities. Some of the students I get to interact with, they're passionate about so many things and their parents are not aware and they feel like their parents have expectations based on what they've been doing themselves. So they're like, you know, I want you to read this, to do this but the student is not so good at the thing their parent wants them to be good at but they're good in another area so they feel like there's a distance between them and the parents because the parents want them to do a b c d yet the students are passionate about something else so they feel they are not encouraged or supported to do the things they're passionate about and the things they're good at and i'm also saying this because we've had results coming out kcp and kcsu and some of the students maybe did not do as well as the parents expected them to do. And maybe there was a lot of maybe shouting and, you know, insults here and there, you know, calling them names because they did not achieve the marks you wanted them to get. But I want you to understand this. Just because they failed in maybe um, these exams they were doing, it doesn't mean they're going to fail in life. So sit them down, have a conversation and ask them what they're passionate about. Learn what your kids love to do and help them pursue and push um, to get maybe into colleges or institutions where they can be able to um, study and, you know, just gain knowledge and skill based on what they're good at. So failing doesn't mean they'll fail in life. As you speak to them, speak words of encouragement and tell them even if they're not doing so well where they want to do well, there's always something they can do and they're good at. Sometimes they might be failing because they're discouraged, but a word of encouragement from you as a parent can go a long way and you can be surprised to find them doing well next term because now they feel their parents have their back and they're standing by them. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that goes hand in hand with um, encouragement. As you encourage them, learn to appreciate them. Sometimes I hear students tell me they don't feel appreciated by their parents or their guardians or their teachers, even when they put in their best effort and they don't do as well as they were expecting. They feel that they're not appreciated, even for the small effort, regardless of whether it bears fruit or not. So I'd like to encourage you. Please learn to appreciate them. Small rewards. It could be something small you can buy for them. You know, make for them a nice meal and tell them this is just because I love you. I want to remind you that you're smart. I want to remind you that you're capable. And I want to appreciate the effort you're putting in. And you'll be so surprised how your children can even change the way they behave, how they respond when you're talking to them. And um, they'll stop being maybe rebellious. You know, they can actually change a few things about themselves because they feel you care and you are concerned about about them so as you encourage them please also appreciate them in whichever capacity you can so something else i'm going to talk about is um when it comes to communicating between you and your child i want you to understand this most of the students they tell me that they're not able to talk to their parents because they feel they're distant there is a lot of disconnect and they feel that they can't reach out and be open with their parents so i want you to make time occasionally sit down with them and just have intentional talks get to know where their mind is at get to know how it's going with the friendships around them how is school going you know what are they thinking about what they what are they watching what are some of the things which are interesting or have stood out in the season they are in be intentional with how you speak to them and how you talk to them and just making time of having a conversation with them you can always pay even if it's one hour in a week have a conversation with them 
just talk to them, a casual conversation, the way you talk to your friend, just try speaking to them and hear where they are and how they feel and what they're thinking. I think that will go also a long way for them to feel that you are paying attention and you do care about them. Something else I'd like to point out is um, correcting your children. One thing I've come to realize, most of the students, when they're speaking to me, they tell me sometimes instead of being corrected in a loving way, they get corrected by being insulted and abused and um, you know things are thrown to them and all of that. And the reality is some of these things which happen back at home, they might look like there are some things, uh, they don't really matter. But when, you're st when your children go back to school, these are the things they're thinking about. And they're like, you know, it doesn't even matter whether I pass or I fail. So some of them, they get discouraged because of how they've been corrected. And I'd like to encourage parents, please do not fail to correct your children. You know, even the Bible talks about, you know, you spare the road, you spoil the child. So it's good to correct your children. And I'd like to encourage you, correct them with love. Some Sometimes when you're trying to speak to them to correct them, they don't know where you're coming from. They don't understand the why you're telling them it's not good to do that. It's not good to think like that. It's not good to go where they went. But when you make them understand why, why it is not okay when you make them understand why they should do things differently um let them understand where you're coming from the perspective you have because sometimes when you just correct without explaining the children are just confused and they feel like you hate them you don't like them and maybe you regret you know having given birth to them or taking care of them to you like you know it's frustrating so i'd like to encourage you even if you're frustrated with your child please correct them from a place of love let them know you're correcting them because of X, Y, Z. Don't do it blindly, insulting them and abusing them. Correct them from a place of love. Talking about correction, this has come to mind. A lot of students have met and they are bitter because they feel their parents wronged them and they never owned up or apologized. And even for them, they feel like it's hard to apologize when they do something wrong. So as much as they're being rebellious, sometimes it comes from a place of pain. So I want to encourage you as parents, um, or guardians, in case you've done something and you know clearly this was not what I was supposed to do, regardless of your age, just sometimes they owning up and just showing, you know what, you are my child and I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I've insulted you. I'm sorry I've abused you. Please forgive me for doing that to you. I did not mean to hurt you because I love you, you know, and I don't think it takes away from anyone just to be able to apologize for the things they've done wrong. So I just want to urge parents, I know this is a hard one. People are going to feel some type of way, but I think it's important to know sometimes the things you do wrong to your children affect their whole lives, the decisions they make. There's some words maybe you uttered and said, and you did this um, because you are angry, annoyed, disappointed by your child. But remember some Sometimes the words we say, there is a lot of power in the tongue. And the words you've said about your children, sometimes they start becoming those things. So please be intentional. And if you've said things which you know clearly, this is not what I should have called or told my child. Please find it in your heart. The grace is sufficient. Find it in your heart to apologize. Let them start next year with a heart of love. Let them start next year with a heart of peace, a heart of understanding. You know what? My parents did this and they apologized for it and they love me. There's freedom in that. So if you've done something, you know, maybe you should apologize for. I'm urging you. Please do. You'll be surprised at the power of just you um, showing your child that you do care to a point of, I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings. It was not my intention. I love you. You'll be so surprised. I believe God is working to restore families and relationships between children and their parents and their guardians. And I think this is a beginning point. You know, forgiveness is paramount, especially when it comes to restoration of relationships. So find it in your heart to ask for forgiveness. If you're a student and you're watching this, please, if you've wronged your parent, please do the same thing. Do the same thing. You know what you've done that intentionally you're doing it to hurt your parents or you're doing it out of rebellion or because your friends told you that's what they do and their parents don't care because maybe they're not there. Please find it in your heart to go to your, your parent and tell them, tell them, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry, dad, I'm sorry, auntie, I'm sorry, uncle, whoever that is taking care of you, if it's your grandparents, you know, your extended family, go and tell them that you apologize for whatever you've been doing for the rebellion, for all the things you've done that were wrong and you knew and even the things you did not knowing, 
please find reconciliation. That's to students and, you know, as well as to parents. Let's reconcile the family. And uh, I'm sure God is going to do mighty things. So I'm going to end this video here. But I'd like to encourage parents, especially those who are believers. Personally, I'm a believer. I'm very vocal about my faith. And I think it's important to introduce your children to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not talking from a place of religion because I've met so many students and they tell me their problem with the whole thing to do with church and faith and God is because of the religion that they've seen and all the things they've seen. And I believe the church is not perfect, but hey, none of us is perfect. But one thing I believe is if they get to understand that a relationship with Jesus Christ is a personal relationship and it's for their own benefit, they are going to be accountable to God in the end. It gives them a fresh pers perspective of what it means to walk the walk of faith and to live a life of faith and to also pursue God for themselves. So I think they're sitting down and um, explaining to them. They're not going to church because you as parents are going to church, but it's because they need to find a place where regardless of what happens in their life, they know that they can communicate with God. They can speak to God. And they have a relationship with him. Encourage your children to understand that it's about a relationship with God. And that's something I really advocate for, especially when I'm even doing my speaking engagements. I tell people it's not about the religion aspect of it because Jesus came for a relationship. And I encourage people to come into salvation, not because religion says, but because it's a relationship with Christ. When you understand who you are and whose you are, you're able to understand what you're called to do and what you should be doing. Your vision becomes clearer and your life purpose becomes clearer. So if you're wasting time doing things which are meaningless, you're able to see that you're here for a purpose and being even in school in this season is because you're here for a season and for a reason and there's a purpose in what you're doing right now but this is not where you're going to be forever and ever i think being intentional with the spirituality of your children don't force them to go to church but show them or speak to them and talk to them about the importance of why it's necessary to go to church but don't force it on them because sometimes the forcing makes them become rebellious to the whole idea they feel like why do i have to why are you forcing me but if you make them understand why it's important for every one of us to know Jesus. I think it will become a bit easier. I believe if you allow Jesus to become the center of your life, you're able to get clarity with every other aspect of your life. Everything else will be able to fall into place. So speak to them about the relationship, you know, and um, help them understand um, why it's important to pray, why it's important for them to be in the word. I personally have been transformed by the power of the word and I advocate for people to, you know, embrace reading of the word of God with an open heart and allowing the Holy Spirit to, you know, speak to them and minister to them, to convict them and to just, you know, help them change their ways. And I believe it's possible. So also finding time to read the word and go through the word and have, you know, small Bible studies with your children. I believe it's going to go a long way as you're looking forward to, to seeing them doing better in school and, you know, academically and in their life in general. Because anyway, they're going to be in school for a short period of time, but they're going to do life for a longer period of time. I just wanted to share this with um, the parents because, you know, a lot of students share a lot of things with me. And um, I bless the Lord that they are able to find um, a place in their heart to feel that they can trust me with the things they're going through. I hope this encourages you as a parent and also, you know, it sheds some light in some areas of, you know, maybe why this, you know, your children are rebelling and all of that. But I do believe this generation is good. This generation has good children. It has smart children. And I believe that this generation is an amazing generation. So not all hope is lost.